Alright, this is the Bridge Nine Podcast, episode number five. Here we are. I'm Tyler. I'm Ryan. I'm Brian. I'm Mike. I'm Derek. Mike and Derek from Alcoa. Mike, you're an official member now, right? I guess so. I'm in the picture. More or less. Yeah. <laughs> it must be a, it must be a cool. real deal. But yeah, we're here, uh, we're here at the office recording studio in North Andover, Massachusetts. Mike's place. And uh, thanks for uh, letting us do this here. Oh, my Glad we could. So yeah, um, let's do some business real quick. Like the past couple weeks we mentioned, we got mystery boxes. Mm-hmm. Get your orders in. They're going like hotcakes. Then we got Hero Font, new record coming November 25th. It's called Peste. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Schultz, what do you got? So uh, today we are also launching pre-orders for Alcoa's Thank You 12-inch EP. Uh, you can pre-order that from us now. It's a one-sided 12-inch with a screen-printed or etched B-side. Uh, this will be out from us December 2nd, also digitally. Uh, so this EP was originally available on CD as part of Derek's rewards program for people who donated a certain amount to his Pledge Music campaign a few months back. So all the bands covered on this EP are current punk or hardcore bands that are friends of Derek's. Uh, I'm the Avalanche, Blacklisted, Make Do and Mend, Elder Brother. And then there's, of course, a re-recording of I Don't Mind. Derek, do you want to talk about Thank You a little bit from your end? Yeah. Uh, (laughs) I was incredibly fortunate to be allowed to cover these songs. Um, Well, cover four out of the five songs. Um, I don't know, just a bunch of great friends that uh, I look up to and admire quite a bit. Um, Old tour mates. uh, Bands that have gotten me through some pretty hard times um, this this past like year and a half being one of those hard times. Um, Dutch, get out of the trash can. <laughs> Dutch. <laughs> also on the podcast, Dutch. Yeah, yeah my dog, dog is also here, just sniffing a trash can. Is I that fucking that buffalo hummus? hummus. That buffalo hummus. <laughs> <laughs> she's, got, she's got a taste for it. <laughs> it really is irresistible. <laughs> Dutchy, come on, leave it. Good girl. She's mad you didn't give her an intro. I know. Sorry. <laughs> this is Dutch. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, punk and essentially punk and hardcore saved my life many yeah. times. This is this is just one instance where it's like on the books. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, I think we all we all really liked that. It was especially like the blacklisted cover was a yeah. such a cool thing cool. to see done like that. Yeah, it was like because sometimes a cover is either just a stripped down version or like a total recreation. But mm-hmm. like I don't know, you went did your own thing with it, and it's. Well, awesome. I have Mike to thank for mm-hmm. like helping with that a lot because when I first brought the idea to him, we were both like really excited about it, and it went through like maybe two incarnations before we just said fuck it and got a little bit weird with it. Yeah. Um, Can we swear on this podcast? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> no queen. Is tag. is Apple gonna be mad? <laughs> yeah, Steve Jobs e. is gone. We're fine. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> Pour one out. Too soon. <laughs> But yeah, I think, I think in terms of bringing that song to life, it was kind of like alternating, like, oh, this is going to be great, and oh, no, what are we going to do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, or but, like, what have we done? <laughs> I put an acoustic track on it at first, and we were just like, this was a no <laughs> bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> this is <laughs> strong now. Yeah. Um, I mean, that that whole EP was, was uh, you know, Mike has like such a heavy hand in that, because A, he did it pro bono. I just called him and said, hey, I had this idea. Mm-hmm. Um and you know it's it's going to hopefully spark um, enough money to get my hip replaced. But also, I mean, composition-wise, like Alcoa would not even with Bonamera, where like Mike only had a hand in it in the very last week of recording. Mm-hmm. It, everything with uh, everything with Alcoa in the last two years, like has like a big Mike Moschetto stamp on it. He's got the touch. Wow. He's got the touch. He's got the touch. <laughs> Yeah, no, it definitely works well. Did you did you record the thank you EP on one session? Was that all? Uh, it was like over session? three or four days. Yeah, and we, we cranked it out really fast. Yeah, because it's nice. cool. Each song kind of has its own like character, you know. Like, yeah, I, I think it was the the first track on that. Like the drums are panned a little bit. I like that. And it's, it's, it's gives it a cool touch. Weird, weird stuff. Yeah, with that no. one. Just, yeah. just, just let Mike really go. Good. Just let him have his have <laughs> yeah. his. That was his that was late the, night time. Doing men was one of the. That was the first track, right? Yeah. So that was yeah. the, one of the only ones I was familiar with, that one, and, and Blacklisted. Yeah. And then we s- saw Blacklisted at, at Death Wish Fest, mm-hmm. 
And I was if, if that cover hadn't turned out well, I wouldn't have been able to face Jerry. <laughs> like, uh, really brought out, I am, but still like hide my face. Really brought out like the Meat Puppets, like Nirvana tones in that blacklisted song. Yeah, like so yeah. slow and weird. Yeah, for sure, it's cool. I feel like a lot of the like when they themselves made that transition, like just John starting to write like some more like out there guitar parts yeah. and mm-hmm. stuff. Like you can maybe your ear can like hear it a little bit more in like a cover like that where um normally it just yeah. sounds like a little scathing or whatever but right. i i that's what i love so much about that band they give no fucks yeah. and they just do whatever <laughs> the fuck they want and they've just gotten like better and better with like yeah the more they've kind of drifted from the traditional hardcore sound which is yeah. awesome. have you gotten to hear their new record yet no yet no mm-hmm. but the songs that they played at, at oh yeah they're so good like on fucking real yeah and their new drummer is so goddamn good He's, sure. He hits so fucking hard. <laughs> is it Adam? I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. I'm not positive. Don't get sure. mad at me if it's not Adam. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with that. I'm pretty sure. I have the worst fucking memory. <laughs> but he's a sweetheart, too. Yeah. No, they're definitely one of the better bands going right now, for sure. Oh, yeah. But, but yeah, were you like, I mean, I'm assuming things went well with yeah. the hip surgery? Like, yep. how are you feeling that's right good. now? I feel fucking yeah. great. That's good. Um, yeah, I mean, it worked. Uh, that's the the craziest part yeah. is that like the idea was presented to a few people and you know my band was like uh a little skeptical at first just because we didn't want to a i have a, a hard time asking for help period mm-hmm. but like we didn't want to put it out there and then just have it completely backfire and blow up in our face and just be like oh sweet well i you know like uh just have this whole negative context with defeater asking for a handout or, you know, and, yeah. and that's not, I guess, it's, I mean, thankfully that's not the way it was seen, but that's the way I ultimately just thought it was going to snap back in mm-hmm. our faces. Um, but, uh, but yeah, luckily it all, it all worked out. People were amazingly supportive and like tons of friends in other bands. Um, pushed it real hard and <clears throat> excuse me like it weren't if it weren't for like in the in the record there's a big thank you list of mm-hmm. like everyone that helped push it um but yeah if it weren't for you know like 20 to 50 other people pushing yeah. it on the internet yeah, like it wouldn't sure. have like yeah done that's, as well that stuff can be really great what what did you end up was it indiegogo or no uh, it's pledge a company music. called pledge music okay, pledge yeah. Music, okay. yeah. Yeah, they normally just do like pre-orders mm-hmm. for records and like crazy incentives where like you get to hang out with the band yeah. and like stuff like that, or or like someone like writes a song for you or whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but they definitely handle stuff, all the back end. Yeah, that's amazing. I think that stuff is like great, even though like for some reason it's like it's like the cool thing to shit on like the Indiegogos and like GoFundMe's of the world. But yeah, I don't know. I don't understand how like you're not getting people to do anything they don't want to do, you know? Like, yeah. you're getting them to give money to something they're interested in giving money to. If anything, it's the most, like, direct <laughs> way to yeah. support something, I guess. Yeah, there, I mean, it can be abused, and, like, <clears throat> yeah. but oh, no yeah. matter what, it's it's of your own free will yeah, whether or exactly. not you want to, yeah. to support that, you know? Yeah. If, if some, like, B-list, halfway famous <laughs> dickhead wants to fucking <laughs> post something saying, yeah. oh, I need money to, you know, put out yeah, a new and record and... $100,000 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and record this EP. On the moon. <laughs> yeah, and then, like, and if it happens, it happens. Yeah. Like, you can't fault the artist for going for it. And then, I mean, you know, there's amazing things that happen, like yeah. that kid Brad getting fucking shot. You know, yeah. like his... Yeah. Shit was fucking crazy. Yeah. And, you know, now his, his wife and child have, like, a little bit of a have a safety yeah, net you know something. like yeah. and like that is amazing like and that's another you know uh positive way that hardcore and punk can like yeah, you know, actually sure. be a community and family yeah. like people talk about community but there really is like it's it is kind of a real thing you know it is it's weird that it sometimes only exists on the internet now yeah. Yeah. which is like the thing that <laughs> bums me the fuck out half mm-hmm. the time yeah um you know, are you rarely see people getting to just sit and talk and it's like, true. you know, talk about records or talk about shows, talk about why they got into punk and yeah, for sure. Place, but but no, it's cool. But at the same time, it sometimes makes that community bigger. You know, you yeah, can reach people. Obviously, I mean, it's the obvious cliche benefits of the yeah. internet in general. You know, yeah. but 
it's cool that 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 niche of the world can seem so much bigger when you mm-hmm. when you can do something like that but and it's also nice to see that like I don't know, just how strangely like small our little sect of everything yeah, really is. Like true. in in the grand scheme of things, you see how like crazy some people can, how like crazy famous some people can get because of the internet. Yeah, and then for sure. <laughs> you see like, oh yeah, so and so fucking punk band has like four thousand followers on something. They're huge. <laughs> they sold out. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. But um, but yeah. So we're here at the office. You guys are uh, in in the throes of tracking the new Alcoa record right now, right? And right this is the, the, yes. the follow up to the the last LP, follow up to the Thank You covers, sophomore record. LP. Yeah, already. How's that? Uh, that was how's what, that going? That so was two far? years ago that we. Did that was two years ago. We missed the you. We missed the one year window that you have to write your second record. You know, you have your whole life to yeah, write your write first, first one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. So we right. missed that window. <laughs> so it's over. But you were so just telling me, though, that, that the songs were just kind of falling out of you. So, like, it's all relatively recent. Yeah, it is recent, but we missed the... Uh, that one year window. We missed the window. We missed the one-year window. So we're no, the band's never going to go. <laughs> <laughs> no one has to know. No. How are things uh, going so far with that, though? Good. What? Where are we at so far? We What's are... Done? We drums are, are done. Drums yeah, are drums done. are done. I don't know. We feel really good. That's we good. have like a week. Drums are done. We feel really good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, that's it. It's just gonna be the drums. You heard it here first. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have like scratch some scratch stuff that's gonna get replaced, mm-hmm. but um, but I mean everything has a lot more shape than it did yeah, when, yeah. We, when we started like yeah. last week or the week before or whatever. I've lost track of the month. Yeah, but yeah, um, cool. yeah, it's it's. There, there comes a certain point when it starts to like present itself to mm-hmm. you, and that's really exciting for sure. So we're it's getting we're, there. It's, yeah, we're just it's at rearing this point. its head. Yeah, that's good. Poking cool. Out. But like, how is the? Has it? What has changed like this time around with this yeah. record? Are you trying like wise? new things from Bone Marrow yeah. at all? Yeah, I mean this this record we Mike and I and and Blake Seal our our mm. other guitarists like just got into a room, um, not just a room that room. <laughs> Um, and actually like hashed out the skeletons of the songs, mm-hmm. which we did not do with Bone and Marrow. Bone and Marrow, I, it, some of the songs were like six years old, eight years old at that point, And like, I was just like rewriting them mm-hmm. with, um, my friend Aaron, who was playing drums at the time and engineering half the record. And, uh, so it was just two of us bouncing ideas back and forth. We would record one song a week for like 12 weeks on drums and then once the drums were down that was just like the song yeah. and then i would track acoustic at my house and we'd we the bone and marrow was such a slow process and i i mean i was trying to like rewrite sweetheart of the rodeo a hundred percent and um and I, I have no shame in that yeah. but um it just i feel like this record getting a few more people that are a in the band and b um you know i trust their talent more so than almost anybody i i have played with yeah. um you know, i think it just like took it took the songs like the skeletons to a new place it, Good. Yeah, yeah it sounds like it was a lot more structured like the last time was this fractured kind of it was in your head and then you needed to figure out yeah, a way to like make that into a band, mm-hmm. not just a. Oh yeah, a everything song. was like just it's an still idea. kind of that way in yeah. a sense. But I mean, we have the the, the time and the yeah. people who are like at, yeah. at our disposal. This and time. you've also yeah. actually done it already. You've done it for a record, so now you know at least where to start. Yeah, we we like saw our our shortcomings, or I saw my shortcomings with the last one. Yeah, um, the best I could, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can only do so much with you. We call it a call it turd polish. <laughs> Did you record most of the the last record with Jay Jay Moss? No, no, no. Me and Aaron did a lot of it, and then we came here okay, to to Mike, here. and we tracked um, all the guitars, pedal steel, Rhodes, and um, organ, organ and Hammond. I think that's it. Maybe some percussion, but then some after percussion. That, mm-hmm. I think you did you did you did bass with Jay, right? Me and Aaron just did bass at Jay's oh, house. Okay. Um, Jay was gone. We just did. We tracked like we tracked. <laughs> Nowhere the, to be found. Yeah, he, <laughs> he just gave us. Um, he just gave us a studio to use oh, for really? the night. Okay. And we just we took the key it, from under the mat. Pretty much. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, we tracked like all eleven. How many songs are on there? Eleven. I don't know. I right? think so. Sure. Yeah. It's yeah, it's eleven. Eleven. We tracked it's all eleven really songs in like four <laughs> hours, and then Jay came home. We're like, "All right, see ya, thanks." <laughs> um, okay, so like he was at his, his like spot, but he didn't yeah. have that much of a hand in it. Yeah, he he only had a hand cool. in vocals, and then we okay. mixed and edited it together. Cool. I got gotcha. you. Um, well, I mean, you've done obviously like all like the defeater stuff with Jay, like. Yeah, I know it's a different band, so maybe it doesn't seem like like there's such separate entities that it doesn't seem like it. I don't know, out of your element to record with someone else, but what's it like going from like working with Jay for years and then doing it on your own or working with Mike? It's amazing. It works well. It's yeah. yeah. I mean, nothing against Jay. I, yeah, obviously, yeah. like he's like a brother to me, but mm-hmm. there is just uh, a dynamic between Mike and I that is incredibly comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I only I might feel this way. He might hate me, but um, <laughs> I'm gonna give it a few more days. To decide. <laughs> Jury's still out. But, oh, by the way, Bone and Marrow is eleven songs. Oh, tight. To be totally <laughs> Confirm. You heard it here first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just it's so comfortable here, and and we we're not afraid to to tell each other how we really feel and, and go through a song again. And it, Mike doesn't get mad at me when my OCD kicks <laughs> in and I just say, well, I just come, I'm just going to retract yeah. fucking eight songs right now. For sure. Um, not, I don't get that mad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's like, a, there's subtle hatred. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm technically at work, so I'm kind of just go. like, surly. you got to keep it professional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to keep it professional, but also be like, I hate my job, <laughs> but I don't, I love my job. This is great. So I'm like paid. doing a podcast on the clock right there now. Yeah, it's not bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty decent. Pretty good life. Yep. Well, that's cool. You comfortable, cool Dutch? Dutch, yeah. is out. Dutch is very tired right now, it <laughs> seems. Perfect. Yeah. Well, what can we expect on a new Alcoa record that we might not have heard prior? More Dutch. More, More Dutch. Dutch. <laughs> More dogs. More canine influence. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think this is just more of a... I don't know how to put it. It's like... Maybe Not, a little more rocking. Yeah, I hate rockin'. to say that. It sounds <laughs> so like it sounds so turn of the century yeah, yeah, when yeah. like <laughs> Venetian blinds came out and everyone's like, "Dude, Pavel's like a rock band now." <laughs> um, I yeah, guess in I the sense know. that Bone and Marrow, it was basically like you and a guitar, and yeah, then yeah. a bunch of stuff around it. Yeah, and, and this is more collaboratively, it's more band here. oriented than than Bone and Marrow. Yeah, yeah. and and. A little, little less uh, like rootsy, folksy. Yeah, a more just. Yeah, active. well, shows weren't you mentioning something like that? Yeah, because when me and Derek were originally talking about it, like even as recent as like a couple weeks ago or a yeah. month ago, you said you were going to scale back on the alt country vibe, but then you kind of got into the throes of recording and realized. Yeah, there's still like a heavy hand in that. I think that's just right. like the way I write songs, um, and it shows with like the what I did for like the four songs on Sleepless Nights too. Like there's right. just like a heavy influence of all mm-hmm. country in there, or like traditional country, but masked with, uh, you know, tw- I was twenty something at the time, like fucking drunk little idiot <laughs> singing. <laughs> um, so yeah, no matter what, I feel like that's just like always gonna be there. Um, but yeah, dress it differently now. Yes, I think bit. it's yeah dressed a little bit differently. It's it's right. not as like by the books typical. Yeah. I guess this is not like as obvious. Maybe. Yeah, mm-hmm. obvious. Probably I think a good word. Doing that, doing that blacklisted cover maybe was like the the doorway to just getting weirder. Yeah, yeah. and, and trying cool. things that may be, may have not, may not have thought would have worked. Yeah, before. cool. Yeah, that sounds good. Adding a little bit more space to the songs that would have scared me before doesn't so much anymore like like outer space like outer space <laughs> that's good mike that screen cool. sa- saver <laughs> yeah like, that's the influence well the, the first album. day the first day you sh- or maybe the second day you showed up like i got a phaser wow yeah i bought that on a whim <laughs> not bad sounds pretty rocking yeah, so we're <laughs> yeah. Rocking. that's where we're at pretty derek tight. you also got married of course since bone and marrow yep so does that change like the themes of your songs at all or how you approach them no i still write like half fiction anyways like there's there's a lot of like what people assume is just like honest storytelling is like sometimes just embellished Mm -hmm. right you know like um 
Well, I mean, everything is rooted in truth, but I mean, same thing with like the way I write for Defeater, everything is, is rooted in some sort of um, history or truth or like family occurrence or, you know, history with my grandfather, what he went through. And, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, nothing really changed. Like, I'm still awful at writing love songs, <laughs> so there's that. I don't um, know about that. That uh, yeah, I don't know. at the end of that empty days, never heard of it. <laughs> what's the What's the one that everybody? Is, I don't every, know every what you're talking kid's about. Every wedding song it's, now. Oh, he, he doesn't know it. I no, know I, it. you know you know the one. I don't know what you're talking. It's the about. one. No, <laughs> every punk kid's wedding song, every alternative wedding, <laughs> alt wedding. <laughs> no, but I think. <laughs> You might not give yourself enough credit. We definitely had an intern sing that at somebody's wedding. Oh, was that, what, is that, was that where I'm getting it from? Yeah. <laughs> it's no. probably not the only time that's happened. Oh, I'm even. sure. Oh, it's not. <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, I, I sang it at my friend um, JB's wedding mm -hmm. from ABR, but that he's the only person that I would ever do that for. Yeah, I mean, it, it's I've had a bunch of people, when I was still working at the record store, people mm -hmm. would come in and be like, oh my God, like... I can't believe I'm meeting you. That was my wedding song. And like someone stopped me on the street in front of my old apartment. Just like freaked out. Hey man. Whoa. <laughs> Holy shit. And I'm like, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And then it gets to like, just this like awkward point. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I'm Where you just have to saying walk an thank extra you block around your house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying thank you so much. And yeah, then yeah. I'm just like, okay, I got to go now Yeah, to my up. home. I'm going to life for a Just like, I wish I wasn't this me. guy right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But J JB asked me to sing it while we were on tour last year, like this time last year. Mm -hmm. And at first I just said no, because I <laughs> said I never would do it. But right. he is like, hands down, one of the nicest people on the planet. So mm -hmm. I, uh, you said this was someone from uh, August Burns Road, the guitar, okay. one of the guitarists from August. You guys Burns did that tour with them, right? Yeah, Peter did. Yep, yeah. it was an experience. Mm -hmm. I love the ABR guys um, a lot, um, but uh, I mean, we made some really great friends on that yeah. tour. Beartooth, fucking great guys, mm -hmm. you know. Um, as like individuals, they're mm -hmm. unbelievably sweet people and like very genuine. They're not like, yeah. It's weird they get lumped in with this whole like quote new metal revival <laughs> and they don't give a shit about that yeah. they're just like playing the music that comes like just naturally mm -hmm. to them and like whether or not and they're it, getting the following yeah oh yeah they're getting the i yeah. mean ha half of it is like caleb is you know super fucking famous on the internet mm -hmm. and uh he uses that to his advantage in a positive way like he he deserves it the kid was fucking 14 when he started touring oh, really? <laughs> so it's just like wow He's got talent out mm. the ass. Um, True that. Yeah. So I mean, I'm glad his fucking and when he when he's when he's doing something that he actually really loves, it's like actually taking off and doing well. So I'm glad that That's he's good. he's he's getting the yeah. the credit that he deserves. And like the rest of his bandmates are just the nicest people in the world. Good. That definitely helps on tour. Yeah. You can actually get along with the people. Yeah. So I'm sure it can go both ways. Sometimes you can. Uh, tour with a bunch of guys in bands you might not care that much about but they're cool guys mm -hmm. or you can tour with a bunch of bands you like but you don't like anybody in oh the yeah bands. yeah i mean i think so we I'm all sure know that it's yeah. Just like, yeah for sure but yeah it's cool it's good to have that balance but uh speaking of defeater uh any uh what's the what's 2015 looking like for for defeater at the moment get your hip your back yeah. tour yeah yeah we have a tour lined up for springtime but nothing's announced yet cool nice. actually cool. zero is announced of our mm -hmm. lives but okay. yeah there's some there's some stuff coming up i'm yeah. happy to just be back and we start recording uh drums beginning of next month mm -hmm. like as mike and i are tying up this record uh jay and joe are recording drums at squid hell i think and then Oh, um, nice. Yeah, it's like the last two days that you and I have booked. So okay. I thought we could go, but we can't. That's cool. And I'll show up un unannounced. Go crash. Yeah, yeah just go crash. Yeah, Leave cool. me here to run the studio. Yeah. <laughs> Engineer. You just listen nothing. To <laughs> just watch the screensaver. Yeah, just watch the screensaver. <laughs> watch this. I know where the action is. Watch Joe play drums for a while. But it's a it's a lot of a lot of tentative unannounced stuff at the moment. Yeah, there's just a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of sit and wait and a yeah. lot of guessing games. Just like 
having been, you know, out of commission for so long mm-hmm. in the, uh, in our little world, we were definitely, I don't know. People were scared. People are scared. People mm-hmm. are scared that yeah. we're just, I'm going to bail or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. You, know? you know, like no <laughs> one wants to like fucking take us out on tour. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter that it was like, hey, Derek couldn't walk. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's it's just like, well, they fucking ditched on two tours. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, well. <laughs> you had a legitimate reason. It wasn't just like you had like a breakdown and said, I, I want to sleep for a week. You know? Yeah, it like, it's, it it's wasn't, very legitimate. you know. Yeah. But people people don't know that. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've definitely gotten like squashed out of a bunch of really good offers, yeah. but I don't really give a shit. It doesn't phase me at all. That's good. Yeah. I mean, like, if you enjoy being in the band, then you're going to be in the band and you're going to make it work. Yeah. I mean, I, I just want to fucking play shows with my friends. I don't yeah. care about how popular our band is. Hell yeah. Could give two shits about <laughs> that. <laughs> well, you've, you've made a decent dent so far, so you guys are doing all right. I just take that as luck, and yeah. I'm just happy that we did. Like, it is 100% dumb luck that we got anywhere, because cool. it's just like one coincidence after yeah. another, and then for some reason people latched on people to it. People catch on. Yeah. yeah, like, speaking of that, I've I've actually, like, pretty much since I've known of Defeater, I've always wanted to ask, like, like, like pre-travels, like, what were, like, your actual influences? Because I feel like you guys, you fit into, like, a group of bands but at the same time like you have your own thing going on like there's like what what were like the direct influences on like defeater becoming a band well i mean to be totally honest jay wrote that record for sluts oh okay <clears throat> so yeah. when he and that was, was pre you right that's yeah i didn't i didn't <clears throat> some, some context here it might sound weird <laughs> 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 that was, yeah that sluts was, was the pre defeater band yes. yeah so mikey our bass player used to sing in a hardcore band with mm-hmm. Jay and Andy and Gus called Sluts. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> it didn't even occur to any of us. For anybody Moving about to, <laughs> the post on. published on Tumblr about <laughs> yeah. Boycott Defeater. It was, it was the old band. Don't worry. Oh, man. <laughs> There's been so many great Boycott Defeater posts. <laughs> Speaking of which, quick, quick story. <clears throat> Some girl cropped my wife out of our wedding photo oh my god and That's posted crazy. a picture of her in her prom dress standing next to me <laughs> in my <laughs> in my suit on my wedding day oh my god That's and posted deranged. it on the internet damn and i made a comment <clears throat> on her thing because she tagged me mm-hmm. in it and i <laughs> Alyssa, it, i was in europe <laughs> i was in europe i like woke up to a text from Alyssa saying like uh, you gotta check this out. And then, <laughs> so I, you know, I saw it anyways, and then I just made a comment and said, can you please take this down? This is my wedding photo. <laughs> or and, was. <laughs> yeah, it was, you know. And, or I said, like, this is a, a picture from my wedding day or mm-hmm. something like that. Like, something very nice and polite because mm-hmm. I'm not a piece of shit. Yeah. And a bunch of her friends and her boyfriend made up this big thing, like, all posted something on the internet about mm-hmm. how I, quote, slut-shamed her. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like, blew it out of proportion. Like, by the time that I got to the next venue and got Wi-Fi, I was tagged in, like, three or four different pictures <laughs> of just, like, fuck Defeater. Their singer's, oh like, such a fucking asshole. <laughs> he fucking, like, called my friend a slut. Jeez. And I was like... Yeah, that's what I did. That is 100% what I did. I asked you politely to take a picture down that you cropped my wife out of on our wedding day because you had nothing better to do with your fucking morning than do a hashtag TBT. (laughs) That time I went to prom with Derek from the theater. Wow. That is heavy. (laughs) As soon as you started telling that story, I was like, I'm going to hate this story. Truth be told, you hate this story. The story mm-hmm. that's dark that's, that's, that's one of the, the, one of the <laughs> darkest things i've ever heard <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn wow the moral of the story is i shouldn't i should not have slut yeah, shamed that maybe girl by taking a wedding picture and this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> true or if i or if Alyssa and i just hadn't got yeah, publicly yeah. married true. if we had just like kept just it a, a private matter be available for these prom yeah, dates. <laughs> <laughs> this is not fair <laughs> Think of uh, the fans too. Yeah. i know i know wow. that's good though but uh, where were we? I have no idea. Uh, about? Talking about oh yeah, pre- sluts oh yeah, the band. We're, oh yeah. So sluts the like, band. Yeah. Um, 
Travels great name for, for yeah. a band. A <laughs> good stuff. Supposedly <laughs> named after the "Give Up the Ghost" lyric. True. It would make sense. Keep the wet dream alive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Call your band Wet Dream. <laughs> Better. <laughs> Better. Less <Dibs>. controversial. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Dibs. Dibs. There are still Wet remnants dream. of stickers and shirts around the Yeah, oh yeah. Office. There's <laughs> remnants of stickers and shirts <laughs> all over America. <Yeah. laughs> Everywhere. People still, like when we were on Warp Tour, people were like, mm-hmm. wait, aren't you a... I was like, I had fucking nothing to do with that. <laughs> I don't, I didn't even know, I knew Jay for like, a uh, day <laughs> while that band yeah. has existed. Because you were in Transistor, Transistor before that, right? Transistor, uh, Sparrows, mm-hmm. Swarm and Sing, Carencia, yeah. um, and like took a couple of years off from mm-hmm. doing anything. Uh, just tried to focus on Alcoa. Actually just focused on my drinking problem. True. Played a bunch of solo shows and met Jay because of a band called Caller Alaska mm-hmm. that was I recording that. with them or recording with him. Great, phenomenal fucking mm-hmm. band. Um, Taylor quit the band and then I recorded like some of his vocals okay. um, for like a demo that Anthony was going to send out or something. And which was a mistake because Taylor it has like a perfect fucking voice, but mm-hmm. they just like wanted, I was going to join the band or something. And then like met Jay and then a month or two later, after we had said, like, oh, we should start a band that sounds like fucking Sparta or something. Mm-hmm. He's like, let's start a rock band. And I was like, all right, <laughs> how about how about Engine Down or something? And uh, he called me, like, out of the blue. I was at work and uh, was like, yo, Poolin is quitting the band. I have a record written. It's supposed to be recorded in a month. You want to come and try out? And mm-hmm. I was like, uh, yeah, I guess so. And he's like, yeah, Top Shelf's going to put it out. It's instrumentally all done just need vocals or whatever. And Mm -hmm. then I was still under the assumption that we were going to like keep the name or keep the old songs, but change the band name or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was like all up in the air for like a few days. And then I went down and we talked about the idea of like writing a concept record. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you mind if I like place the story in the forties and have it be like, just me put my spin on, Basically, he just said he wanted it to be about, like, a broken home Mm -hmm. and, like, pull from both of our experiences. He was, like, still very straight edge at the time and, like, kind of, you know, um, anti-alcoholism. And wanted to pull from that. And me being a heavy drinker at the time, I was just like, I can fucking write about that. That's great. Mm -hmm. Um, Then, yeah, so, I don't know. His influences musically, I think, were all over the map. He described the record incredibly poorly (laughs) (laughs) and said that and i quote and he's this is like kind of public knowledge we've said Mm -hmm. it a bunch of times in interviews so he said it sounds kind of like 108 meets rise against okay (laughs) and i said that sounds super bad (laughs) Uh, but i see what he's talking about yeah i like i see like both um both influences in there um But then I think, you know, there is like some Strike Anywhere, some Modern Life is Mm -hmm. a lot of Modern Life is War. Um, You know, Witness was was still like the record in at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, no one really cared about Midnight in America. It just flopped. I love that fucking record, Mm -hmm. but it took a while to grow. Yeah, but I ended up liking it a lot. Yeah. At the time when that thing came out, I was just like, well, they're just fucking geniuses. (laughs) They're geniuses. Um because even when my love my way came out my friend uh my friend andy played it for me and mm-hmm. it was like while i was in transistor and for some reason i had it in my head that like the scene in iowa was so small that like everybody was gonna like go to every single show so mm-hmm. when transistor played iowa i was like i wonder if the mod life dudes <laughs> <laughs> not the case um i don't think big yeah state. <laughs> big state um but Maybe uh, the Slipknot guys were there. That's true. That I mean, there's nine of them. So. Oh, I forgot <laughs> about about to have one of them. I there. forgot about that band. <laughs> it's from there, even though they have a record. <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to forget. I honestly, yeah, new metal just like I was too punk. Too I didn't punk give a fuck metal. about yeah. that shit. Like, yeah. 
people in high school were just like, don't you like, like, corn and shit? I was like, <laughs> fuck you, no. <laughs> Are you fucking They're like, but you like hang out with the kids with big pants? I was like, yeah, we fucking listen to hardcore. What the fuck are you talking about? Big pants. Big, big pants. pants. Big pants. Left Cat over from the 90s. <laughs> big pants, kids. Jinkos. Never owned a pair of Jinkos either. But yeah, like, man, I missed a lot of bad shit. <laughs> Too smart for that. Lucky you. Lucky you. What can I say? Old and snobby. <laughs> have the rest of us always been. Just to be clear. Yes. Yes. Jenko. Yes. Jenko. Jenko. Yeah. Yeah. You have. Did you? I don't oh, know yeah. if I had yeah. the brand. I'm a little older than you know. guys, but I'm not as old as Derek. So, because yeah. I'm a fucking so grandpa. You, you were on the cusp, maybe. I may have been on the cusp of Jenko. You janked. I, I, had had I don't think I had a, like the brand specifically because I never had name brands, but I had like probably like the Walmart version of Jenko. <laughs> Just the biggest jeans I could find. <laughs> <laughs> the widest type jeans. <laughs> but Surrounded yeah, by a bunch a of fucking jankers right now. <laughs> a lot of weird pants back in the day. Yeah. Where I had like, cause, like zip off pants that turn into yep. like shorts. I love where this conversation's <laughs> going. <laughs> Let's keep this going. This up, I was going to because I had a pair. I had the zip up side. The pants. zip up side? Yeah. Like, how does what that is- work? I don't know, there was like a weird zipper on like the side of the jeans. I think that was for jeans. like uh, maybe like leg. a basketball shoe, being able to fit a maybe. giant basketball shoe like through. into your pants oh, so maybe. you didn't have to change. Yeah. Or did Wait, you have to take your shoes jeans? off? These, they were jeans, Jeans though. with zippers on the side. Oh, oh side. no, yeah, I thought you were talking about like... like the tear kind of? Yeah, like <laughs> pants or something. <laughs> so what was that What for? was the point? I'm not really I sure. Why'd you have them? Why it was like a, it was like that a dis- weird, pretty slutty. Just a, <laughs> <laughs> it's, like it's like a weird design aesthetic. I don't even know if like the full pant leg like opened up when you unzipped it. It was just like for like show. Huh. Was, like, so you weird... unzipped it. Did it have almost like a connection yeah. underneath? Like yeah. they were still. Were they plaid and were they bondage pants? <laughs> 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 like a rave, like a rave phase. Bondage jeans. Bondage be something. jeans. Yeah. Young, young Schultz. He wore a ball gag to fifth grade yeah. with bondage <laughs> jeans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Classic S and M youngster. Yeah. Do you no guys problem. ever grew up with like punks and bondage pants? I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. No. Like the street punk type. Jesus Christ! I am too fucking old. <laughs> Before we leave this topic, I just want to address how obnoxious it was to zip the, the pants off into shorts and then yeah. just oh, have what? pant legs. Just yeah, like what the true. fuck you do with the pant yeah. legs? Yeah. Put them in the back pocket. And also, you. if you yeah. want it, like if you don't like you play a wiffle ball or something, and you want to just rip them off, like. I feel like it's a struggle to get them over your shoes too, because you probably had giant puffy skate shoes too. <laughs> yeah, Cyrus's, so I you couldn't get like anything over. Bands that Taylor's are like a meter sure. across. That might be. Yeah, exactly. I can't wait for this conversation twenty years from now, <laughs> <laughs> where we're all like, "Man, remember when we used to like a communicate with words <laughs> and see each other in person? Yeah. See each other in person." <laughs> We are wearing, like, band shirts and <laughs> really skinny tight, pants. Tight pants. <laughs> we had those tiny Fuck, pants remember on. flannel? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> remember, clothes. remember clothes in general? <laughs> remember clothes? <laughs> clothes and earth? <laughs> and earth was so dumb. <laughs> oh, I can't even believe we yeah. fucking inhabited that place. <laughs> uh, Shithole. Good times. Actually, that is a direct quote from Alien Resurrection. Earth. What a shithole. <laughs> There you go. I think I've only seen the first two. It's a mistake. It's a mistake. Yeah, yeah. Go for the whole quadrilogy. Okay, it's to. cheesy as fuck, but yeah. like, I think it's after the third one it gets kind of kooky, right? Yeah, Resurrection's <clears> like <throat> a little, a little bit, um, a little bit cheesy, but it's it's written by um, Buffy, the guy who wrote Buffy. Oh, okay. What the fuck's his name? Joss Whedon. Yes. Nice. Is Alien vs. Predator part of this saga? That's like the more. No, 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 no. That that doesn't exist. That's that sounds like, like Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah, there was some show. insane like okay. reboot to try to get some money. Beat the Jason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks Hanna Barbera for fucking doing crossover <laughs> reboot shit. Thanks fucking for nothing. ruining everything. Ruining yeah, the the, ori- the first four Alien movies are okay. great. Resurrection's just awesome. They clone Ripley, oh, like wow. at what? Well, because in three she, she mm-hmm. croaks. Mm-hmm. Sorry, yeah. they have to bring her. Right. That's all right. I don't yeah. care. Everyone knows. If you don't know, then yeah. no, it's been you a gotta while. bring her back. Though. He sees dead people. <laughs> Ripley is brought back. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, to kick some more alien butt. Of course, it's tight. How could you without it's her? Super tight. And Winona Ryder's in it, and she's like the babe lean. <laughs> <laughs> cool beans. All right. Well, we were kind of talking about uh, the Defeater Star. I wanted to. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to mention like the the Modern Life is War thing. I feel like that's definitely like almost like a given. You know, like you can hear the Modern Life is War, but I also feel like even on travels, like you guys took that 
like they kind of Modern Life is War made that sound, and then you guys took it and said we can do that, but we can also not not be afraid to play faster and not be afraid to play heavier, but also not be afraid to like be that much more like melodic too. Yeah, like um, I think that's just like that. <clears throat> kind of Jay's inherent yeah. songwriting, where like the way that I write songs and the way he writes songs, like he no matter what he has melody pouring fucking mm-hmm. out of him. And it's weird because like Fugazi's his favorite band of all time mm-hmm. and he you know, they're one of the most like discordant and jangly yeah. kind of like yeah. melodic mm-hmm. bands. Um and he he definitely pulls a lot from that, but I think maybe without him knowing it like the more simple melodic stuff like Mineral and Jimmy Eat World pours mm-hmm. out a lot more. True. Um and that's like, <clears throat> you know, hid- hidden in those songs to like a untrained ear, I guess, or whatever. But mm-hmm. there's a lot, there's a lot in common with with um, with that stuff. So chord choices um, with Jay is like, you know, he usually just puts his fingers on the fretboard and whatever sounds good to his ear, just like that is now yeah. the thing. There's no, there's really no structure uh, as far as like what. I don't know what our sound is. Like there was never a defeater sound. It was just like mm-hmm. Jay writing songs with Andy and then that progressed into Jay writing songs with Joe. Um Yeah. But yeah, I th- I think the the mod life thing like it was easy to compare us to that at the time because there weren't a ton of other bands that were just not trying to fit a mold yeah, or like sure. not trying to like you know, like, I don't know, like the, the last Half Heart LP, everyone's mm-hmm. like, oh, dude, it's like just like a fucking Mod Life record yeah. again, and it's like, no, it's like still... I feel like it's very much its own thing. Yeah, it sure. still has, like, it's like straight up youth crew influence, yeah. like, there's the the chord choices might be different, and like, mm-hmm. the, the approach to some of those ideas might be slightly different, but at the root of it, it's still just a fucking yeah. great hardcore record. Yeah, and like, I mean, there's like, I feel like... Pat Flynn is kind of like a one of a kind vocalist. Yeah. Like, oh, his such delivery a, is yeah, unreal. it's so distinct that yeah. like no matter what he records on, like it's gonna have that that twist to mm-hmm. it. So there's definitely that. Yeah, it would also like I don't know. I think that me and Eaton have like a similar delivery too, mm-hmm. and like our just the way our voices sound when I scream and when he screams, it sounds a little similar. Yeah. I don't know that. I think it was just easy to pigeonhole yeah. us like that. No, like, I always saw you guys as... And they had, like, just broken up. Different. Yeah. So everyone yeah, was like, oh, true. sweet, you guys are new mod life. And then Half Heart and Verse yeah, fucking yeah. break up. Like, oh, you guys are, like, the new Half Heart. Yeah. Like, what are you <laughs> fucking talking about? <laughs> like, pick one. Which Have you never be? heard bands? You never heard music before? <laughs> yeah. No, that's... Yeah, I can definitely... Ryan and I, I'm sure, can, can <laughs> relate, relate there when you yeah. get pigeonholed into the one sound for sure especially when like you're doing something that isn't one thing you know yeah. like like it's why do you choose to like pin you to one thing when you're doing something that's so dynamic like, yeah why that was talk- why i yeah. think we loved like when we had the <clears throat> idea to put the first acoustic song on mm-hmm. travels um, yeah it's just like well either people I, I we were both just like people are gonna fucking hate this <laughs> and they're just gonna fucking call <laughs> us out for it but uh but people liked it and it it ended up helping mm-hmm. quite a bit, I think, just to, yeah. to have that big wrench in the works, and you are trying to do like a couple different things yeah. at the same time, and, like, and that's just that was kind in. of like a we're not going to ease you into this. This is a straight up just acoustic song with singing, yeah. you know, and the yeah, only yeah. part of it on the album that mm-hmm. does that, which is cool. I don't know, I like, I don't know, your records are cool because like you don't, you really don't, you can tell you guys don't really give that much of a fuck about what people Zero think. Zero fucks. You do your own thing, because <laughs> Travels was, like, more straightforward, had the acoustic song. Lost yeah. Ground, just an EP, which you kind of dove into a different territory, but you didn't do, like, the acoustic stuff on that. Yeah. Then, like, Empty Days was more melodic with the acoustic stuff, and then you went and said, you're probably at your biggest, most popular, and you said, fuck it, let's put out our heaviest record, like, ever yeah. with Letters Home. That's what, I mean, so, I just, like, I, <clears throat> that's cool. I love Letters Home so yeah. much. It's my favorite record that we've done, I think. Yeah, um, that's how it should be. Lost yeah. Ground, too. I I really, I adore those, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Travels as well. I think Travels, like, because we were so young and, and dumb, like, we didn't, we cared even less at yeah. that point. 
where we're just like we wanted it to be good and we wanted people to be excited about it we wanted labels to have interest but at mm-hmm. the same time we were just like trying to we're just putting out a genuine yeah. record because we're genuine people like, oh, yeah? Yeah. but uh empty days i definitely like lost lost some of me in that whole time period when i was mm-hmm. writing it and we were touring all the time and jay wasn't on tour with us and he was at home writing and it was like a real turbulent time for the band so yeah. i feel like it's there's like a weak link in the chain but it's just funny how like that record is the one that catapulted yeah, us yeah. but it's also the the like easiest to understand like there's songs on that record where it's just like so cut and dry that it's just like here you go mm-hmm. like yeah. here's the here's the part to sing along to yeah. here's the and that i think is where people latch on like yeah, yeah for sure you know but the the more dumbed down things are the easier it is for people yeah to them for the masses to be like oh i get it now mm-hmm. you know it's definitely a thing it's how the world operates and but... that stupid fucking wedding song you know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i still it's not called I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clarify. You heard it here first. Again. I love this tagline. <laughs> I love all it. The, all the stuff from three, four years ago. You heard it here first. Heard it here first. Uh, breaking clarify. news. I love how you get closer to the mic, too. Like, heard it. Breaking news. Yeah, exclusive. <laughs> But um, yeah, like, but so yeah, that's how I feel about Defeater. Okay. I hate my band. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, but like, you have a, like sense of direction for like the tentative upcoming stuff. Next yeah, we wrote part. twelve songs mm-hmm. in a week, and <laughs> wow. um, you, you <laughs> out. Shit. some of them were like <clears throat> the easiest that we've ever done. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like just me, Jay, and Joe in a room, and we were hanging out for like. Pool and wrote some with them like the first day that they were writing and then he had to go back to the Cape or something to like he's fixing up his parents house oh, out okay. there um, and then uh, but yeah some of them were just like they just came so easily and it was just like the simplest shit mm-hmm. um, and then we kind of took it on some twists and turns and, and turned it into a, a song but but then there's some that they like toiled over yeah um, but it's it's easier when Jay has a, you know, the means to to record it, and we can go back and listen to it immediately, and like just setting up a couple of room mics, yeah. um, just makes the process go a lot faster because you can immediately digest what you've done, and then you're like, oh well, that was awful. Delete. Let's go yeah. back in and <laughs> yeah, sure. and uh, and try it again, yeah. and like, and Joey is such a fucking good drummer that like, it's not like when we say like oh yeah this is like not the direction we want to go and he's like mm-hmm. okay i'm just gonna try something entirely different cool. and he's just so naturally fucking good yeah. it's fun to watch yeah. it's fun to watch yeah it's a yeah, fun yeah, drummer to watch it look very easy. yeah yeah he was good which is what it's funny because he's I feel like drums were always a thing that they like, were people yeah. talk about with defeater and you parted ways with your original drummer right so that was those were big big shoes big to shoes fill. to fill yeah. hard yes, shoes to sure. fill yeah I never mm-hmm. met Joey before he filled in for us mm-hmm. at Sound of Fury. Like, the first day that we met was him being like, hey, I'm playing drums for you today. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, had, he had, like, practiced with Jay a little bit. Um, but even then, we kind of weren't function. We still don't function as a real band mm-hmm. because we live all over the country now. True. But um, he, had like, drove up from Connecticut and prayed prayed what <laughs> played <laughs> played with jay played with jay for a day and, mm-hmm. and learned the songs on his own and then um we played sound of fury and it went pretty well yeah. um we forgot the end of cowardice but that's whatever you know so shit happens there's <laughs> like there's no lyrics at the end right um and uh and then we played a the next weekend we played three festivals in europe Mm-hmm. And um, and he wasn't sure if he could do those. He wasn't sure if he could get off from work, but he did. And those went amazingly well. Um, cool. He like just really latched onto the songs, and and he he shined. He yeah. like and nothing against Andy. I fucking love Andy. Um, we we've made amends with anything that 
went sour mm-hmm. in our relationship uh, because of the band or whatever. But um, Joe, Joe is just like a different animal. Andy yeah. is incredibly talented, and he thinks of things that no one else is ever going to think of. Mm-hmm. But the way Joe executes when he's actually playing is like unreal yeah unreal and he does it like mike said he just makes it look so fucking effortless <laughs> and it's just because like what comes naturally to him you can't learn true you can't like he did he's all about feel mm-hmm. and drummers will practice and practice and practice to try and get that and like you can't you can't learn it it just has to be in you for sure so, joe Longobardi, everybody <laughs> 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 This little solo. <clears throat> yeah, he yeah. needs a drum solo. On this <laughs> that's that's the variation for this one. But like the the overall feel of this record is it like more in the vein of Letters Home? Or are you guys going more melody? In my head, it is. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. What we wrote the the like real simple stuff that mm-hmm. we just like banged out. There is like some some serious like similarities. I'd say Letters Home is like the band that I always wanted Defeater to, yeah. to be, to sound like. Like I I want it to be a like by the books a hardcore band. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. um I I want to throw other things in, like as curveballs and stuff, mm-hmm. just because like it comes naturally to us to 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 do something different. Um but if I don't know how to like put this into words, but like I have a very distinct idea of what I want our mm-hmm. band to sound like, and it conflicts with everybody else. Yeah, like yeah, you know, yeah. like everybody in the band has like different ideas as to as to what mm-hmm. um, our band should should sound like. Mm-hmm. But Letters Home to me was like the perfect the embodiment. Of yeah, the, the embodiment team. of just like yeah. oh well, we have like the weird noodly stuff, and we have like the super simplistic like fucking. Blood in My Veins has like a two minute long breakdown yeah. or something yeah. stupid. Like, <laughs> and it's not even a breakdown, it's just chugging on yeah. E. Like, it's yeah, ridiculous. Well, you but, and I were talking a couple weeks back at that fest in New York about how, like, what fest? Um, on you, on to you, on the dun 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 fest. <laughs> but, um, but how, like, especially now that like Alcoa is so much a thing, like, Defeater is so much more like your outlet to do like balls to the wall, like heavier, yeah, more aggressive stuff. So, and I think that like w- like what we were talking about at the Oneonta <laughs> Punk Fest 2014 <laughs> uh, was that I yeah I think that's why I do want to have like Defeater be a fucking hardcore band yeah. in order to like get that. I want the best of both worlds, and I have it because mm-hmm. I have an outlet to write like sad, sappy, fucking alt country bullshit, and then I have <laughs> the fucking outlet to to scream and fucking mosh on stage, yeah, go hard in the pit, yeah, fucking <laughs> going hard. <laughs> and all I want to do is mosh on stage. Of course, you know, I just want to like tour with my best friends yeah. bands that make me want to stage dive, and then. And now that you have a, a brand new hit. You can, you can do go that. hard. Can do that. Can go I can hard. go hard. My doctor definitely <laughs> said I would release you to do like pretty much anything. He's like, maybe don't jump on stage just <laughs> just yet. Just yet. And I was like, oh, we have a tour planned for like end of March. He's like, you should be good, but <laughs> I guess I'm not like fully recovered yeah. for a year, which oh, okay. is like. I got you. Yeah, but who knows? The pit just happens, you know? The pit just, like... <laughs> you can't predict, you can't predict yeah. the pit. You can't control a pit. You know? You can't it just appears that on stage. Yeah. Swarm of people. Yeah. <laughs> That's good stuff. Good times. pit controls you. <laughs> the pit controls you. <laughs> Soviet Russia. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. <clears throat> but it was actually... This is a random thought, but it popped into my head, speaking of pits. You guys played... This is Hardcore 2013, and I feel like you were definitely one of, like, this is Hardcore obviously caters towards the hardest of the hard. Yeah. <laughs> the most oh, hard, yeah. You know, like... Hardest uh, of the hard. You, you guys were a standout there. How was how was that? Well... For you guys. For I you. loved it. Um, <laughs> playing right after Wisdom and Chains was fucking great. <laughs> I love that band. <laughs> then Ravel Mob right after. It's pretty yep. good. Um, I was in heaven. Yeah. I was just getting to see bands that I really love. Yeah. Um... Except, uh, you know, we missed, uh, we had tour dates, like, up and 
up until that, mm-hmm. which I was real bummed on because I wanted to see the Mod Life reunion and supposedly the last U.S. Kid Dynamite show. Uh, oh Dynamite. yeah, yeah, yep. that was cool. That was the, I think that was like the first day of that. So yeah, that was cool. But so yeah, it was, was awesome. it was cool oh, to see you guys there. I know like this is hardcore has done like Touche Amore in the past and Title Fight usually plays and stuff. But yeah, it's fairly diverse. It is. Yeah, there there's diversity, but I it's I cool. feel like for the most part, Joey books bands that he knows are like bread and yeah. butter in that yeah, scene. Yeah, you know, like sure. um, he's he's a smart businessman oh, too. Definitely. Like, he's like yeah. he knows what people are gonna buy and what, yeah. what's gonna draw people to. I mean, it's gotten so big too. It's so fucking rad to like see it actually like go off every year too yeah, and just like awesome. all the vendors the food's great mm-hmm. yeah it's like very well-rounded he does yeah. a really good job but but yeah it's cool to to have seen you guys do something like that yeah it sure. definitely felt a little strange mm-hmm. um you know i the way i like introed the set i was even like so fucking blown away that there were people in the room i, was, yeah. <laughs> I assumed that half the people were just going to be outside mm-hmm. just because like oh well <laughs> the, the pussies are on now. <laughs> um, but I thought I remember your set actually being like it like yeah. popped off. It was like it really went good, pretty actually. fucking yeah. nuts, and my leg was killing oh, me. <laughs> and I was like, still just like, yeah. fuck it, who cares? Yeah. Um, and also, we had some some friends there that I didn't know were going to be there, and mm-hmm. it it really like it made me go the cherry like, on even, top yeah. yeah made me go even crazier oh yeah um yeah so that i don't know it was just a really fucking good day we had friends from australia that lived in toronto mm-hmm. that were down um we had um a bunch of our like military friends were there it was awesome. just like all around a fucking great great day yeah that was really cool the all in dudes were there um Fucking unreal. All the pals. All the pals. Just gig pals. Hell gig yeah. pals. <laughs> Hell pals yeah. from gigging. Well, I think uh, we're at just about an hour here, so I think I think that's all we really got, unless there's anything else. End on else. gig pals? Yeah. Gig pals, gig everybody. Pals. <laughs> but um, that's uh, the Bridge Nine Podcast, episode number five, with our special guests from Alcoa slash Defeater, Derek and Mike. Thank you guys for being here. Um, is there anything you guys want to plug personally? Band. Any final words? Any final final words? Departures? Nothing. Just a, nothing. Just nothing. That's all <laughs> just I guys. But yeah, no. Nothing to sell. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for uh, being a part of this. Thank you, Mike, especially for having us here. And Thanks for guys. Letting us cut into your day. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, real quick, I just want to plug, ask us questions. From ask here on questions. out, we're, uh, we're switching over to Tumblr because we figured it's a little bit uh, less scary than email. We know some of you <laughs> kids, maybe you haven't heard of email. So we're doing Tumblr. So I think that's just bridge numeral nine dot tumblr dot com slash ask. Yep. That's yep. the link. I know you kids like yeah. Tumblr, so we can do it anonymously or if you want us to mention your name, just post with your name or whatever and uh we'll do uh we'll do your questions, we'll answer that. But until uh until next time, that's been it. It's been real. Peace. Peace out. Later. Peace.